Good evening and welcome to the Disability Factor, a program that uh, amplifies, uh, that seeks to amplify the voices of persons with disabilities. And um, we are coming to you live from uh, Star FM, sounding good all the time, as well as on Capitalk 100.4 FM, Harare's Heartbeat. Uh, my name is Patis Wempofu and thank you for making us your station of choice. Uh, thank you so much uh, to Ndumiso, the Skywalker, as well as uh, Danny the DJ for down here on uh, Star FM. Yeah, so, um, tonight we want to look at um, intellectual disability. We want to understand what it is and how best we can help uh, the world with intellectual disabilities and uh, to hopefully get this discussion to get this to work by a clinical psychologist, Arnold Okay, um, and to you, our valid listener, please feel free to be part of this uh, conversation. it means that it doesn't differ much from other disabilities because when you're said you have a disability it means that there are certain uh, competencies and uh, things that you're supposed to do that you cannot do because of a particular reason in this case it's just intellectual um, the whole idea behind intellectual disability or, or before it was termed disabi intellectual disability there used to be a nasty word that was used to call it they used to call it mental retardation and so forth so in the latest diagnostic manual they did away with that and then they said you know what it's intellectual disability and they did away with that derogatory term um so when you look at intellectual disability basically we are looking at somebody who has been tested and uh has an iq of about 49 and below that is if you're using a standardized test like the vexlas intelligence scale for children and so forth and not just that we also look at what we call social and occupational functioning and uh, for us to term something as a mental disorder or a disability to some extent it has to cause significant occupational and social dysfunction meaning to say this is somebody who um, has such a challenge that they cannot take care of themselves and are probably a danger to themselves and to some extent to others as well or they need quite a huge amount of care so um in terms of intellectual disability we look at primarily three major areas um when we test or when i test for um intellectual disability if you are using an intelligence scale like the whisk or the vexless intelligence scale for children we look at verbal um perform uh, verbal iq which is your use of language and your knowledge and your vocabulary and what you speak because um, we always say psychology as a as a field it has a short sort of history but it has been it's, it's as old as life itself or the planet or as old as humanity mm -hmm. some of the terms that we use um, they in common language they indicate um, some some of these psychological concepts like uh, in terms of language you can zomunachitaura that on its own, the vocabulary that somebody uses and so forth can tell you the level of development that the person has. Meaning to say that at a particular age, mm. you're supposed to be using certain words, you're supposed to understand certain words and so forth. And if you don't, then that means that there's a problem. Okay. So at what stage uh, do I say as a parent, Mwana mm. Ane um, that really needs um, uh, the intervention of a, a specialist? All right. Um... Normally, for, for, for children, you look at the developmental milestones first. Uh, key milestones are looking at uh, language development, 
And then there are some competences that you look at. Like, for instance, when we assess children below the age of six, um, I use what is called the Griffiths Mental Development Scales. And uh, we look at uh, foundations of learning, meaning to say a, a child has got certain um, learning skills that they are supposed to have that are that go with your age you know matching colors matching shapes and so forth and so forth and those skills they run from birth all the way to, to to six years so when you see a child is not doing or performing in certain tasks certain things that they are supposed to be doing um then it's an indicator that there is a problem there so we measure foundations of learning and also language and communication eye and coordination uh social emotional uh, development and uh, gross motor skills as well. So mm -hmm. if a child has got challenges in those areas, you can easily tell that something is wrong somewhere. Okay. And uh, what are the causes? Um, intellectual disability, I can put it in two ways. Um, there are some children who just have intellectual disability as a condition on its own. Okay. And then there are some children or, or even adults who get to have intellectual disability as part of a condition like for instance down syndrome one of the key characteristics uh, key, key characteristic symptoms or challenges that come with it is intellectual disability sometimes cerebral palsy and sometimes you can even have children who are on the autism spectrum that may have um, intellectual disability as a comorbid condition that comes with it so some kids may have it as the only condition, but sometimes it can come as a key characteristic of another condition that they have. Okay. And then um, uh, let me come to um, the behavioral analyst, uh, Tino Tenda. Um, maybe it, it, it first explain to us uh, what uh, your job entails uh, before we get into our discussion. Okay. Um basically when you are looking at uh, children with um, uh, disabilities um, focusing on let's say intellectual disability but then now since it's uh, autism awareness month i would like to relate more to autism mm. we mainly look at um, sensory issues which then lead to behavioral challenges so uh, i as a behavioral analyst i specialize more on managing the behavior so that it gets to be acceptable in the society so that we can coexist without pointing fingers okay and so what um, behavioral challenges um, do children with intellectual disabilities have okay um one good example since we are saying that um when we go to autism it uh, it has a lot to do with uh, sensory issues so sometimes someone might be so sensitive to smells, strong smells rather. So let's say mm. uh, which is something that um, is neurotypical. So we have to find a way to to stop that behavior so that anons but then how do we do that? For instance, um, since someone are strong smells, how about we look at uh, stay soft in onza my strong smells so let's say it's a cloth uh, which is dipped in uh, stay soft so it it's going to produce that strong smell that is uh, uh, which, which the, ch the child is it will be seeking when he or she will be doing the inappropriate behavior so basically with time uh, when he or she exposed to that therapy um, that behavior will eventually stop Mm. And the challenges that you face, I'll pose this one to uh, Panache. As a teacher, what challenges do you face um, when teaching um, those uh, young children? Okay, um, we face a lot of challenges actually. Um, maybe starting first with um, mental challenges, I could say. Uh, we go through stress at times. Uh, it's very much difficult. Uh, you might find it very much difficult at times. Unonaguti uh, munu, let's say munani mwana, for example, uh, autism. Munani mwana ni autism. Anu kuna guti, ah, bamnini, dukumbiro ati musio mchindi tarisiro mwana wangu. Andiga. You would find that maybe that person might, uh, maybe that bamnini might not feel uh, the need or maybe, uh, maybe being able to look after the child because maybe they will be saying ah, uh, you know etc but uh, us as teachers 
we yes we face uh ma ma ma, ma stresses agadaro so you see kuti you might find it uh you might find it actually a little bit uh, uh of a challenge uh kuti uh you'll be spending the whole day with these kids but for us now uh we see it as a blessing actually kuti we actually get to to spend more time never an hour so yes we face uh, 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 some challenges here and there uh you might see kuti maybe at times maybe uh even the equipment that we use uh here in zimbabwe uh we maybe we need more more and more equipment that will um that will assist vanawedi vanenge vane ma intellectual disabilities and how does um, uh, intellectual disability affect a person's daily life um, including educational opportunities and social interactions okay um, so here let me start maybe with my social interactions uh, you'd see uh, these kids uh, or maybe these children they might not be able maybe to form proper relationships with uh, with the general populace uh, or maybe understanding my social cues right so you'd see good maybe uh, maybe it's a time they might be they might be happy or they might be laughing uh, that's that's on social uh, my social cues edu and maybe forming my relationships then in terms of education uh, uh, they may not maybe be able to cope Near the mainstream. By the mainstream, we mean grade one, grade two, grade three, gender shakadaro. Um, so maybe uh, in our field, we come up with what's called my IEP. These are individualized um, educational plans. So these uh, maybe curriculum mainstream, do not not curriculum, curriculum mainstream, but uh, as a um, as specialized um, specialized um, organizations or schools we we work with what's called my IEPs and these as you can uh, as you can see on the on, on the on the definition kuti anengari ma individualized saka ba tukuti tukutari samwana andiga as an individual jasi ana maybe ne curriculum yekuti zvirikunzi mese muri 50 you're supposed to do content uh, etc so here we're looking at mwana ari one so this will be specifically for them and will be specific to the individual uh so it is not because our goal here is to make the child or the person who has intellectual disability to be very much independent right they can they can do uh bathing on their own they can do making of the bed on their own, which is something we as uh, safe have in Zimbabwe. Chatino nyanyo focus on uh, which are called my adaptive skills. Uh, so it's equity. Um, so maybe education wise, uh, we focus more on maybe trying to come up with my IEPs, Edu, at Tugutara now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we know what the Panenke Panema challenges are Kawanda, um, but my strategies uh, that we have found to be effective um, and they are in terms of um, uh, teaching Avana Iva Vava, how do you engage with them and um, ensure Kutishamurku Vazizisa Vano Bata? Okay, uh, I will answer that one. Um, so what happens um, is that uh, when when you are designing an IEP, like uh, what uh, Panasha was saying, obviously you are looking at the needs of the child. So here's the thing: you know what the child requires. Uh, you like there is an assessment first. There is a diagnosis. So already you know what you're dealing with. Mm. So now you are you're looking at how you can solve the problem. So the IEP will be focusing on the needs of the child, where it is lacking. Like what uh, Arnold was saying, that there is a developmental age and a chronological age. So when you are, we are, when you are talking about intellectual disability now, we will focus more on the uh, developmental age. A child might be, let's say, 16 years old uh, in terms of chronological age, but then their development may still be maybe at three years old. So you don't address... Um, things that you you give to a maybe tasks that you're giving to a 16 year old but then you you start small you 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 break the the, the task um like teaching them in what what can i say like true vanipasi 
tichenda papa denga tichona uti mwanao yao ya arukita achita se achibata shinu jayajia mbichana mbichana because if you overload it isaidu cha uroti mwanao yao ni ma intellectual any intellectual disability definitely won't be going anywhere mm-hmm and and um, I'll, I'll i'll come to uh, the psychologist um could you, what, what are the uh, treatment or uh, yeah treatments okay. is there any treatment that okay. is available all right um in terms of treatment in psychology don't talk about treatment when it comes to such conditions mm. because this is a developmental disorder which somebody is born with mm. so we talk more of rehabilitation like for instance i'm coming from st giles rehabilitation center where uh, you get to have occupational therapists and speech therapists and even physiotherapists who come together and um, uh, do therapy or, or administer therapy on those children to, to, to sort of build up on what they already have. Um, what we talk about in, in, in mental health, especially is the pathway to care, maybe that's what I can add on to this uh, discussion. By the pathway to care, we're talking about uh, what happens if you find that your child is not developing as well as he, as he or she is supposed to. Uh, currently, we've got, uh, l- let me just put it as the public pathway in which if you find that your child has got delayed milestones or anything like that, then you, you would have to go to a place like uh, Children's Rehabilitation Unit at Harare Hospital or the Child Psychiatry Clinic at, at, at Parrenyat where they see the child and diagnose the child or even bring the child to St. Giles Rehabilitation Centre where I do the assessments and then I mm-hmm. diagnose. So um, in this country, if a child is diagnosed, there are two ways in which a child can go into the private sector and see uh, therapists in the private sector mm. or um, it can be done in government but then on top of that we've already had systems in place in our country where if a child has got intellectual disability there's also the school psychological services which is very uh, active which when a child is taken there especially above the age of six they are the ones who can tell you even the schools to which you take a child to um, and then, of course, in the private sector, there are some people who have come up with their own schools that take care of children with um, intellectual disability. Because, like I've said before, it's, it's a very wide topic and it comes from all sorts of angles. It can mm-hmm. come as a comorbid- as, as comorbidity to some conditions or it can be some children who are just born uh, with it as an only condition. So there are various schools like Ruvimbo, um, that's a government school. Saint, yes. And, and, and St. Catherine's, St. Catherine's, yes. Yeah. So for those, for, for, for access to government schools, you would, the child would have to go to school psychological services for an, for, for an assessment. And I'm in the private sector. So when I assess a child, um, my, the letter or the report that I write um, does not have the government stamp. So the government is the one that has got authority over government schools. So if a child is assessed by school psychological services, your child can be put in a special needs class. I think that's the most common thing that... So, so, so one high school special needs class is now going to via school psychological services. Okay. But then if it is a private school, I can do the assessment at St. Giles and then the child can be put through therapy or go through a special needs class in any other school which is not government. Uh, but what barriers are there in, in, in terms of accessing health care? Uh, that therapy or rehabilitation, as you say? Um, I guess it's an issue of knowledge, really. Because uh, at Parinyat, where we there's a child psychiatric clinic that we run that I'm a part of, and it is totally free. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, if you have a child that you think, I, I mean, I always tell people that you, you know before we do our assessments, I believe in the parental instinct first. That when you feel that your child the, is, something is not right or something, get the child investigated, mm-hmm. and either at Harare Hospital or at Pari, you can take your child there and then the child can be seen and diagnosed and then they will tell you what to do from there. Yeah, uh, because uh, we notice that we are not able to change it. We are not able to change it. We are not able to change it. You know, how does that impact? You know, we are not able to change it. Pani ma interventions yere ya munoti aya deja kakasika taikwanza kuzoka tziriza. Okay. Because remember when we talk about uh, intellectual disability, we're talking, we're talking about chronological age versus, uh, you know, mental age. Mm-hmm. So there's the issue of time. There are certain things, I'm sure even the behavioral analysts can agree with me, there are certain um, aspects that you would have to teach within a particular period of time. Such that if you bring a child, for instance, for therapy at the age of 12, it may be late for those therapists to really do a good job on the child. 
the child is best brought when he is maybe two for by the age of two if a child has got some developmental problems you can notice if the child is not walking if the child is not talking and if the child is not you, you know um there, there, there are certain checklists that you can you can check and i think maybe it's an issue of information dissemination that is supposed to be out there for every parent with a child to be able to notice or to, to, to notice certain things on your child that if they are missing then go to your nearest hospital yeah um so uh, <laughs> let's talk to the behavioral analyst um i think uh, just take us through that process here so that people then have an appreciation quite assessment uh, they've gone um, through therapy or rehabilitation um, take us through the stages. Kuti au ya arizera rakati ngati ti vatangi ra pazera chairo ramno kwanisa. Kuti munge mchibatra na nevana. What are the first steps? Zamuno uh, tanga kuita in terms of assisting vanaiva. Okay. Mwana um, au ya sepsa da kwa mama chita ndizi. Um, it all depends on how we are. But now we are, we are, we are getting this shit mm. Like what Arnold was saying, that early intervention is key. If, if a child gets help early, obviously intellectual disability is a pain. And it, mm. But it can be managed. And it, to an extent, some of them know that they say that they are mainstream curriculum and they are not going to be able to work with special facilities like they are safe have in Zimbabwe. But zero. So pano we mwana uh, we we assess the child, tona kurukuleka, nyukuda kubad zero and it then uh, like what uh Arnold was saying that I think pana yepado chao rogunzi, we mwana we are up up because an assessment report in ngi nyasuri detailed to the send a guti chero we kenda kuna we have a specialist and enga chuno yiviring. Ano to wana guti mwana da kuit kwa say and mm. where are we going and and everything is documented in our like profession. So can I wanna to wanna help elsewhere? Pano to we need somebody to do better. Kaka to ya kapudita. But the problem with parents sometimes, yaningar in denial, like what Arnold was saying. So if you are in denial, sometimes let's say, um, pani diagnosis ya kapuda pano wana ya asiru kupumera na nayo. Haakura kids ewewe, and and mm. you'll be in for surprises. Then maybe two weeks down the line, urugu not ah, kung wana maybe kune vangu be kuti let's say ebi efe kuti ano jikaka na maybe mapete and it. Mm. It's something that can happen. So sometimes it's all about kuti mubereki ari. It's a it's a multidisciplinary work. So it it involves the parent of the child, uh, the teacher, um, uh, all the specialists, the clinical psychology, the uh, the clinical psychologist, um, be it the the psychiatrist of the of the child, and it veseva kashandra na pamuichete everything coming on clear and it. Okay, fine. It's also when you are specializing on behavior and it, let's say can I tend to kuma adaptive skills we are teaching the child to be independent. For instance, like uh, brushing of teeth. Uh is neurotypical as we, we feel like it's really basic. But Munaninga mm. ni intellectual disability and gonongasinga rather than gasinga to shins we see. And in the ningasinga to understand some of the, the key issues in society, the good let's say we are in a queue something. I need to get what I want. So definitely he wants to go like in front of everyone. And it, so mm. that behavior management aspect and we are now whilst I assist in, in, in his academics and it level because like uh, what Arnold was saying could to which a chronological age versus developmental age. I mean can I move not in one you wake your kuda Dear ma, ma, for, for instance, my sunrise, I go grade one. I do not basa kuti akakura say in terms of chronological age. Chero aini ten years, uh, twelve years. If that's the age, do you know for nonga achit? So that this is no fun biran. But can I want early intervention like what I was saying? It will mm. definitely yield good results. Okay, and then kuna kuna teach up eh, pamuno zizi savanava. Do you group them together? Because to go na um, uh, mainstream schools, iva nava mwanu si aniswa chenda niku bata kwa mwanu ita mwanu grade iva nava iva no bata zaga fana na ireka na guti nemo muno teza yuzo zogo guti ayo iva no kas tikaske iku bata tova pa wama classes avo avachwa pa avo. Yes, definitely. Um, so what happens is uh, just like maybe in the mainstream as well. 
uh definitely kune vanege vachi kaska okubata like what you're saying uh maybe the developmental age i'll talk about developmental age mm. and chronological age uh so you'd see uh maybe developmental age yake okay, iri at five definitely they are not in the same uh classroom or yes classroom as one anenga in a uh, developmental age iriku iriku maybe one year mm. because definitely mabatira one ngwa kuita zvino zvinenge zvakatoti siyane you would see kuti maybe anenga in a developmental age year one year are non verbal and then maybe anenga in a developmental year five years maybe or six years maybe anenga kuita achitaura or some of the words maybe now cre- uh, being able to create uh, some sentences so you'd see kuti uh, us not having them in the same class will be definite because we are earning in a developmental age iri kumberi mbichana despite maybe chronological age you'd also need to understand kuti chronological age maybe no gona iri ku 15 but developmental age yake iri ku maybe 3 saka maybe uh, anenga in a developmental age iri ku 3 yoyo they actually have to go kune anenge like zvinenge zvichicha zvito zvichienderana like that so yes definitely we group them you okay. are listening uh, to the disability factor on uh, star fm and as well as uh, capitalk 100.4 fm uh, my name is patisu Wempofu. yeah so we are talking about intellectual uh, disabilities and i am joined in the studio by clinical psychologist uh, from st giles rehabilitation center arnold mutemeri um, we also have head teacher at safe heaven zimbabwe uh, who is also a behavioral analyst, Tinotenda Jirava, and head teacher at Safe Heaven Zimbabwe, Panache Chipunza, who are helping us uh, with this discussion. So I'll bring it back to the clinical psychologist as we wrap up uh, because of time. Um, after um, helping or assisting uh, the child, you have done my assessments and um, you're doing a rehabilitation. Mm-hmm. What programs do you have? This is how then, so that then there is that continuation. All right. Um, in mental health everywhere, the most important thing or the key thing in mental health is what you call psychoeducation. And that when you are managing any case as a, as a practitioner, you are supposed to ask the parent or the person who has brought the child, mm. could you, do you understand what this is? Do you understand the implications and so forth? So that the person can also give you um, what they think, the myths and, and, and all sorts of things. And then you undo them by giving them the adequate information. Mm. Because in as much as we classify them as childhood disorders, the thing is, if it is a family, you are, bo- you are all united by kinship. So nothing strikes one person and does not strike another person. So um, there are some issues. Uh, I remember when I did my master's, I did a thesis on, on uh, the quality of life of parents with children with cerebral palsy. And I, and, and I used the WHO called the WHO uh, measure for quality of life. And there were some issues that were raised, for instance, like if, you've got, if, if your parents and you've got a child who's got some uh, mental health problems and is not sleeping or anything, your sex life as a couple is going to be negatively affected. Mm-hmm. You know, and and mm-hmm. if that area is negatively affected or the relationship is negatively affected, then everything goes down. Mm-hmm. And even there's the issue of relatives who may say all sorts of things. And if you are a couple that's doing well financially, and then you happen to have a child with a disability, then runs Magarumba or something along those lines. So so there are those issues that come in and. Um, uh, disturb, so to speak, and those are the myths that we have to undo and tell people that there are these um, issues that are there and, and, and um, give them the actual factual information as far as uh, intellectual disability is concerned. And on top of that, I just want to clarify on the issue of, um, or to add more rather, on the issue of how the children are treated, be it in the classroom or in the education system and so forth. Mm. Intellectual disability has got levels. There is mild intellectual disability, then there is moderate, and then there is severe. So those with mild intellectual disability, they have a certain level of functioning. But then you get to see that they do have intellectual disability when uh, there is a particular problem that is beyond their coping mechanisms or something like that. Mm -hmm. So those are uh, people who can even grow up. And because remember, children don't remain children. They, uh, They go through therapy and they grow. And those with mild intellectual disability can function in sheltered workshops and so forth. 
And unfortunately, in this country, we don't have a lot of them anymore, but we used to have them where these big companies would, would set up workshops. And then they would have those children or those adults or even adolescents with intellectual disability, mostly adults anyway, because children would be child labor. Mm. They would go into those sheltered workshops and then do some little work or even putting buttons on shirts. I remember, I can't say the name of the company because it would be advertising, but mm. they used to do that where you'd put, where people with intellectual disabilities would put buttons on shirts and then they pack them and then they take them and then they get a bit of a check at the end of the month. Mm. So there's that whole role of the corporate sort of um, sector to come in and help out um, people with intellectual disability. Okay, so as we wrap up, uh, your uh, yes, uh, you want to add? Yeah, I wanted to add on uh, on the parental support that you were talking about. Mm. Um, for for example, uh, Safe Haven has got uh, psychosocial groups uh, that are online uh, because of uh, the use of WhatsApp these days. We've got about uh, five groups which are covering like the whole of Zimbabwe, regardless of where you are. So these groups, what they do to 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 the parents now, um, it's a mixture just uh, parents with uh, children with uh, disabilities so sometimes in th because in those groups sorry they are like um different specialists who are in the group so uh, let's say a parent is a problem sometimes maybe they are not financially okay that they can afford to 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 visit some um, specialist so if they just uh, type their problem in that group definitely probably there is another parent who has um, come across the same problem at once they might actually help with an idea that ah maybe no one wangu ndaka zodai ndika die and it aninga to wana help and sometimes because it's not easy having a child uh, with special needs so pango pa chuto to nzoti vabereki vano to mbore mero and it but uh, when they're in a in a space equity they don't feel like they're being judged because you know society sometimes you know mbo battery la yoti mkazi this you know but uh kana vari vaka sangana vano batsirana sometimes ni mazano kuti ha no ini ni ndaka mbodai so and this worked for me Mm. And I think it's it's something Chekuti Babereki, regardless of where they are, Banufana ku supportana and to understand Kuti uh, the the journey is not for, for them alone and Banufana mm. Kubatana and uh through that support Yagadaru ino ino batsira. Yeah, and so because we have uh, run out of your, uh, 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 time, um, just your final words um to the listeners out there in just under a minute. Uh, okay, um, I would say to, to the listeners, whenever you see that there, there is a child uh, whom you are suspecting to have uh, intellectual disability or any other special needs, and let's encourage each other to help early so that you can have early intervention. Yeah, like, um, like just to add on what Tino said, Vananga was a change to Kumba. Like what Arnold was saying, Kuti, we have facilities that offer free assessments, right? Kunana uh, Pari, ETC. So please, uh, like what Uncle, uh, Uncle, uh, Uncle Tino is saying, Vana Ngawasa Gare Kumba. Antiga, Vana Ngawa end for an assessment so that they will be assisted. You'd see, Kuti, the earlier you go for these assessments, uh, mm. maybe the better you have Mwanawa Kuti Ange Avi. Yes. So, yes, please. All right. My final word is, uh, like I've said before, the parental instinct is the most important. The moment you feel that or the moment you see that a child is not uh, performing in certain areas as he or she is supposed to get your child assessed, mm. help is there um, in hospitals, Parinyatwa, Harare Hospital, even St. Giles. You, if you bring your child, we will see what to do. We'll assess your child and then tell you, the factual. I know in families, but in my family doctors has a degree in medicine. We will say all sorts of things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but bring your child to us, say Giles, Parry, and, 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 and so forth, and then we'll do a proper assessment and tell you the true diagnosis that the child has. Indeed. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we were talking there to um, uh, the clinical psychologist Arnold Mtemeri, uh, head teacher at Safe Heaven um, Zimbabwe, Panache Chipunza, as well as uh, behavioral analyst Tinotenda Jirava. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for making time to talk to us. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you so much for hosting us.
We are Star FM, are sounding good all the time. My name is Patis Wempofo, and many thanks to my producer, Meredith Ngidi, as well as Tondere Moyo, who made sure that we were live on our socials. Yeah, so um, up next is a Templeman and Tanaman. Good evening. You've been listening to Disability Factor. Join us again next time on Star FM. Best radio station ever. Let's go.